Good morning, traders. Welcome to Privateer FX Weekend Preview. Hope everyone had a good weekend. I actually had a bit of news out the past uh, past couple days. the The big news came out of uh, Donald Trump, fearless leader's tweet saying, I am pleased to inform you that the United States of America has reached a signed agreement with Mexico. The tariffs scheduled to be implemented, which is supposed to be Monday, by the U.S., are hereby indefinitely suspended. Um, obviously, we're seeing <clears throat> in early Asia some risk on, on the back of that. Dollar Mex uh, has dropped about just just shy of 2%. Uh, we closed out at uh, 1960. <coughs> Excuse me, 1962. It's gotten down to, you can't see it here on this trading view chart because it's uh, still an hour before you start seeing prints in some of these um, non-Asian currencies. Um, got down to about 1922, I think has been the low thus far. Um, I don't have the 200-day moving average here, but the 200-day comes in at 1920 today. A couple of the analysts' uh, reactions of this, of this news um, are that they think it's kind of a short-term bounce for Mexican peso. Um, you know, Trump is so unpredictable that uh, wouldn't be at all surprised if he starts threatening him again in the next couple weeks and uh, you know most of the, the bank research that I'm reading and other analysts this the independent research is you know Mexican peso is a sell and rally so dollar mix buy on dip um, you're looking to pick some up somewhere right around 1920 200 day and uh, you know where it all kind of started from was 1910 1915 um, we had that big move up to 1980, but we we were fortunate that uh, we were fading this on Friday. You can see the weekly chart here. We had a doji week. Um, closed, you know, right around where it opened last week. On the daily, you can see we had an inside day on Friday. That's that blue down. It's a blue down bar. And again, we're trading down right now. Looks like the last price is right around just under 1930. Um, so we've taken some dollar max shorts back. Um, the way we kind of looked at it going to the weekend was even if they do impose the tariffs, that was expected. Um, we didn't think there'd be a big bounce in dollar max on Monday when the 5% tariffs were supposed to go into effect. So the risk reward <clears throat> seemed pretty good. And, uh, you know, picking up about 30 handles on this trade on the open. So the other, the other news was, I was just reading, um, this is U.S.-China trade negotiations. Munchen held a, a very candid and constructive conversation with uh, the PBOC Governor Yi, Yi Yang, Yi, Yi Gang, um, on the sidelines of the G20 Finmen meeting, which was in Japan over the weekend. Uh, it doesn't look like China and the U.S. are going to be engaging in any trade negotiations before the G20, which is later in June. And uh, so nothing really new on that front, you know, which I guess would be <clears throat> kind of offsetting some of the risk on sentiment that we're seeing uh, on the Mexico tariff news. You know, if we look at... Uh, some of the price action early on, uh, Aussie dollar did trade up to, uh, I think it got up, got up to 70.23, it looks like. I'm just looking at my Bloomberg on my other computer. Uh, it's back down to 70 cents, you know, pretty much unchanged on the day. Dollar yen had a bit of a rally on this. It's still about 0.2% higher. Um, let me see if I can... Yeah, here, if I get down to like some of the shorter time periods, you can see how we, so the 15 minute chart, we closed at 80.15, we'll call it, it traded up to as high as 80, uh, 
sorry, 108.15 to 108.50, um, which is this, you know, resistance area. Uh, what was that high on Friday? It was 108.67. <clears throat> we still like selling risk rallies. Um, be curious to see where the S&Ps open. Uh, my guess is they're probably up between a half and three quarters percent on the open. Um, and we did close at uh, not, uh, 28.75 on Friday. Yes, and people will get to that chart in a minute. But we still, we like I said, we, we still like selling risk rallies and uh, plan on fading some of this enthusiasm that we're seeing here on the open. Um, we also had the U.S. jobs number came out on Friday. It was 75,000. The whisper number was kind of 150-ish. Um, we, you know, things are slowing down. We're markets pricing in potential rate cut out of the Fed on in June. We think that's a bit early, but we do think that they could go uh, in July. And at this point, just the way the market's pricing, you know, all this dovishness, we think the market would be really disappointed if in July they only cut 25 basis points. Um, we think the stock market basically will shit the bed if, if they don't go a full 50. So <clears throat> something to look out for, you know, it's, it's further down the road. Um, kind of like a range type trade and risk over the next couple of weeks leading up to G20. And, um, you know, if nothing monumental comes out of that meeting, um, I think we could see dollar China above seven. You know, dollar China has actually held in there really well. Here's the daily. Um, you know, we did close kind of middle part of the range, but it, it made a new high here. Um, we got up to like 696. So we haven't seen these levels, you know, for a while. Let's scrunch this down a bit. You know, clearly China's on top here, picking up some CNH, you know, and selling some dollars. But, uh, you know, a breach of seven looks like it's in the cards in the next couple of weeks. Goldman, I think, put out something, I believe it was on Friday. <coughs> They're saying internationally, a breach of the psychologically important seven level may be perceived as an escalation that makes an eventual trade truce even harder to achieve, which makes a lot of sense because that's the weaker one. That would be China just kind of letting the currency weaken, which is going to, um, you know, throw a wrench in, uh, throw a wrench in, you know, the U.S. wanting a, a weaker dollar for the whole reflation uh, story. And there's you know, been a lot of talk about uh, a weaker dollar helping reflate the global economy. Um, so it's kind of a battle here. And I do think that eventually seven's going to go, um, but probably not until um, after the G20 meeting. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look. See what else is going on here. Uh, we'll, we'll look at a couple. Let's look at the dollar index. Dollar index had a, obviously had a, a very difficult week. Uh, we had that inside week two weeks ago, and then pretty much opened up and went straight down. And it, you know, looks to us that we'll probably retrace back down another about another dollar, maybe ninety five fifty, ninety five eighty um, from here. Euro dollar had a good week. There's the big green bar. And, uh, you know, obviously the, the weaker jobs data out of the U.S. on uh, Friday, um, you, you started seeing some more dollar selling. We still like Aussie dollar. Um, it had a decent week, closed kind of in the upper two-thirds of the range. And uh, we do like this higher. We think we can get back to 71 cents, somewhere around there, before you see any of the real selling coming in. Uh, dollar CAD. You know, they had the, kind of the one-two punch with the weaker U.S. data and the stronger Canadian jobs data. So it had a really tough week. We started out the week above 135. We closed, you know, two and a half big figures lower. Um, here's the daily. You can see that we've now had one, two, three, four, four to five days. You know, pretty pretty significant dollar cat selling. 
and we also broke a trend line that I don't have drawn here, but I believe it came in around 133.30 ish. Um, that's dating back to where would we go ahead and draw it? Where is that? That was at October October first low. Yeah, that's a pretty good line. Right around 133.30 <clears throat> was the break. And that's on the weekly. Uh, whoops. Sorry about that. Just blew up the chart there. So we're short of dollar CAD still. We got lucky with the, the combination of the weaker U.S. and the stronger Canadian jobs data. That was a risky one. Um, but, uh, you know, that's working out pretty well. We're going <clears> to <throat> we're gonna try to stick with this. For a bit. Um, what else are we looking at? We're also looking at, we, we've picked up some Aussie dollar and we're, we're trading it against the crosses. We had a little bit of long Aussie versus the US. Um, but, you know, we've been short sterling, let me get a daily, we've been short sterling Aussie and it's really not done much at, at, at all. Uh, but you can see here, um, we had a doji day on Friday. It's a bit weaker here today. And that's, you know, more of the Aussie strength. I don't, there, I don't think there was really anything coming out. The cable's pretty much unchanged. Um, you know, the Aussie is up a bit. But we still like playing this. We think we can start taking out this low that we saw last week or maybe even uh, get below this April 17th low. So we're short some sterling Oz. Um, short a little bit of Euros, which is not really working. Um, and uh, we had some Aussie CAD longs on middle of the week, and we stopped out, stopped out of that. That was <clears throat> that obviously got I got crushed on just the pure CAD strength. And um, but we we do we think that Aussie's got some room on the top side and. Uh, you know, leading up to G20, and then I, I think we'd be looking to fade it again. If you take a look at some of the equity indices. Um, we've had a pretty nice, like really crazy retracement of this down move. You remember um, a week ago, I wasn't, uh, I did not do the video, um, but we opened, you know, went down, made a new low, closed our <clears throat> tested a pretty big 2730 was a target for us for this short position that we put on um, up at 2915 and we put some more on at 2805 and we've been we kind of stopped for profit on the way back up at uh, you know, 2760 2780 and uh, yeah that was uh at the time thinking, you know, why am I stopping out of this trade? Well, we've rallied another 100 points. I and mean, this is just a crazy parabolic move higher, which I think needs to be faded as we approach uh, any, we get anywhere near 2,900. I think you get a chance to, to sell this again. Um, let me just run the fibs here. I don't know what the heck that thing is. Hold on. Run the fib, the all time high. Bear with me. You know, we've already blown through a bunch of levels. I, I just can't believe how quickly the sentiment changes. I mean, equities, obviously, risk in general was really oversold. Um, so, you know, a bounce was due. And, uh, you know, people were short this thing from, we started selling it in early May and got lucky that it was a sell in May go away type trade. But here's this 2900, 2906. We'll look to put this uh, short equity position back on. Same thing with NASDAQ. Um, <clears throat> S&P is actually, looks like it, on a percentage basis, it's probably rallied more off those lows, but you, know, you get the picture here. This one's only retraced half of that move. Maybe call it another, another 100 points higher. We'll be fading that, which would coincide, I think, with uh, 29 figure 10 in the S&Ps. Um, over the next couple of weeks, we've got a um, quite a lot of uh, central bank meetings uh, coming out. We've got the SMB, the FOMC, the Norges Bank, the Bank of England, the Bank of Japan, 
got six global CPI prints. And then we have the U Summit G20. So we're expecting some, you know, a, a decent trade. Uh, you know, we've always got the tariff headlines, got the China trade war headlines. Um, let's not forget about some of the emerging market risks that are out there. Uh, obviously watching very closely the $7 million China, because if that does break, um, I think the shit's going to hit the fan in, in risk in general. And you, know, you could play it either selling equity markets or buying bonds or, um, you know, trading dollar EM. And, uh, you know, that's something we'll be, <clears throat> we're watching for. I've got alerts set for that 7 double level. Uh, WTI crude, let's see what that did. Um, you know, it's had a, a pretty significant sell-off. It did, uh, it did get a nice little bounce. And uh, I don't know, we're kind of in no man's land, so I'm not, not touching that. Gold hanging around some really big levels here. If we go here, um, I can even go one more. Let's go to like a monthly <clears throat> monthly chart in gold. Clearly, people are holding this. They are worried about all the geopolitical risks that are out there. And you can see how big of a level this really is. If I draw a horizontal across these highs, these are all fractal months too, which is just massive. Um, that's 1378. The nearer ones are, you know, you go back to February, there was a high of 1350, call it. There's some more highs up here at 1370. So th th this area here is is really key for, um, and that, you know, obviously that would be a, they'd be buying gold if, if this does turn into you know, more of a risk off situation. But in the meantime, we are, we're trying to be very tactical, very nimble um, leading up to the G20, but there should be some headlines to trade. There should be some decent, uh, you know, sl slightly heightened volatility leading up to it. And then uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get a chance to sell this risk rally because we think that the, the China trade story is, you know, in the early innings and uh, one of our friends calling it a, what was he calling it, like a U.S.-China separation back in fall and wrote some research last week or the week before calling it a divorce. And this is not going to end well. We, I think, are all in agreement on that, and which should make for some good trading markets. Um you know, if you are tactical and nimble. Anyhow, nothing much coming out uh, in the next few hours. You'll the equities open in thirty minutes, so I'm going to get this video posted, and uh, you'll hear from us on the European Open. All right, good luck this week, and we will update you when uh, if any new developments come up intra week. Otherwise, you hear from us on uh, all the European Opens. All the best. Cheers.